What's the difference between HEDS and HSD? Are they even different? Is one worse than the other? What do these diagnoses mean? <sighs> I know friends, it's confusing, but let me clear it up. darlings welcome back to my channel my name is robin han and happy eds and hsd awareness month i haven't posted a video about eds awareness month yet which is weird <laughs> so today i do want to talk about the difference between heds specifically and hsd before i do that i do have a quick disclaimer i am not a scientist i am not a doctor i am just a human who lives in a hypermobile body thinking about the intersection between these two diagnoses and what they mean. I'm not going to do a deep blow by blow of the criteria bit by bit. That is another video that may come sometime in the future. I'm just going through what is the practical difference. What we as zebras ourselves need to know if we've been diagnosed with one or the other, where the gray area lies and how to best advocate for our care. First, what are these acronyms? HADS is Hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. HSD is Hypermobility Spectrum Disorder. So let's start with the diagnostic criteria for HEDS. As you can see, they're super formalized. There are categories, very formal, very rigid lots of categories. And here is the diagnostic criteria for HSD, way less formal. It's just like a list of stuff, right? Now this may give the wrong impression that HSD is by its nature less severe than HEDS, and that is not true. If you look at these lists, you will notice that there is nothing that either of them say that has anything about severity. The only thing that is even close is that the HEDS diagnostic criteria does mention how long you've experienced pain, but not how badly it's affected you. There are two sort of major structural differences to these things, aside from how formal they are. Difference one is the Baten score. The Baten score is a requirement of EDS. You must score a certain amount in the Baten score. If you've seen in my journey to diagnosis video, which is up here, you will know that I took that test and my Baten score was nine. It's very high. It's a test out of nine. I got nine out of nine. <laughs> but it only tests certain joints and the way that they move in certain directions. So it tests if your thumb can touch your arm, but it doesn't test any other plane of movement. And the HSD diagnostic criteria does acknowledge that some people may experience other systemic hypermobility that doesn't show up in the Baten score. It does say that even someone with a low Baten score might have HSD that might still be an appropriate diagnosis for them. The HEDS diagnostic criteria, Difference two is the musculoskeletal traits. A lot of the musculoskeletal stuff appears in some literature to be necessary for an HSD diagnosis, where it's only possible in a diagnosis of HEDS. There's a lot of literature about HSD that suggests that those musculoskeletal traits are necessary for an HSD diagnosis. But at the same time, I've also found literature that says people with HSD may experience musculoskeletal changes with their hypermobility spectrum disorder. So even that might not be required. So perhaps that's not even set in stone, right? All of this said, what does this fundamentally mean? Honestly, it comes down to this for me. It means that some people who don't meet the diagnostic criteria for HEDS, but do experience symptoms daily that interfere with their lives and do need a diagnosis to get better supportive care, may fall under HSD. And that, to me, sounds like a classification. Problem. Out of all the types of EDS, HEDS is the most common type. And along with HSD, they're the only types where science has not pinpointed the mutation in your gene that causes it. But that's not for lack of trying, right? There has been a lot of effort put into it, just hasn't been found yet. And the HEDS criteria just changed in 2017, meaning new understanding of these illnesses is still coming. We still don't know everything. And that's fine. It is no one's fault that science takes time. That's just how science works. <laughs> But fundamentally, what I want to get to is this. My own hypothesis about these illnesses. Take it or leave it. Do what you like with it. But I think it's worth thinking about. 
my feeble user's understanding of a body with HEDS slash HSD sort of suggests that those words apply to maybe a cluster of different types of smaller mutations, which we have all named the same thing because we don't know any better yet. But what we as patients need in the meantime are the diagnoses that help us pursue the care and the symptom management and ultimately the validation and identity that we deserve. Your diagnosis may also depend on your doctor and what they're familiar with too, right? And there are even places in the world, like Vancouver where I live, where genetic testing is not available to anyone with any type of suspected EDS. Here, they're just too busy. The backlog is too great. So here, except in some extreme cases, most people with some type of EDS or other get diagnosed with HEDS because that's the only one they can do without the genetic test. And for many of those people, just being able to say that some doctor somewhere has written on a piece of paper that yes, this person is a zebra is what they need to be able to get the treatment they need. So then besides the bait and score thing and the musculoskeletal thing, what's the difference? We don't really know. It's just our current form of classification based on the science we currently have. HSD is not less bad. It's just a different diagnosis to ensure that as few people as possible who need medical care and attention for their illness get left behind. Fundamentally, your zebra identity is valid no matter the severity or the diagnosis, or even the stage of pre-diagnosis if you're still looking for it. You're still part of my dazzle zebras. And remember, if you were looking for a joyful little corner of the internet where we could learn about opera disability, queerness, cats, and tea, you have found it and if you weren't looking for it you have found it anyway so go hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell keep the comment section full of joy and light and i will see you in my next video i'll scooch over a little bit every single video i've ever made i have had to cut out a burp and the molten it's amazing